welcome to Sarah Stamping Retreat. I thought I'd pop on today to show you some ink blending backgrounds with our sponge brayers. Now you'll have to excuse mine because mine are filthy, you can see I use them a lot. Um, but I wanted to show you what's in the pack. So when you get a pack home, you get two of the handles and four of the sponges. So you've got plenty for doing quite a lot of different colour combinations. So the reason I wanted to do this with you today is I think that a lot of people get a little bit scared about doing ink blending but it's a really nice effect and I think that this is a really easy way of doing it. So I've not pre-made any cards today, everything's a little bit cakey as it comes. So to start with ink blending you just want to have a piece of cardstock, I like to use our Whisper White cardstock. I'll just run over it with an embossing buddy just to make sure there's no sticky prints on it or anything because if you've got some grease from your fingers or something on it then it will show up when you bray it. And the other thing to be sure of is that you're working on a nice flat surface because if you're working on a bumpy surface the bumps will show through when you're braying. So the first one we're going to do today, I want it to be kind of a nighttime background. So I've chosen Night of Navy, Misty Moonlight and Seaside Spray. And the trick when using the bray is, so that you don't have to have a separate one for every colour you own, is to start with the lightest colour. Then you can use the lightest colour first and then it won't matter as you're picking up the other ones. I mean you could wash it in between but then you'd have to dry it so... So when you're, when you're inking up your sponge, you want to go one way. Don't go like this because then you'll only ink up half of your, um, you'll only ink up half of the sponge. So you want to keep going one way until you've got a nice even spread over. And then you want to start going. And I like to go from one end and work towards the middle. And you want to keep going back and forth, back and forth across. And you'll see that as I'm going, it just gets smoother and smoother the more ink that I put on. So that's the seaside spray on there. And then I'm going to get some of the misty moonlight. And I'm going to work that from the top down. So the, this white bit's going to be the top. I'm going to have the darkest at the top. So I'm going to work that from the night, from the top down. Because you see where I've got a very dark colour at the top, I don't really want it to be that dark all the way. So I'm keeping the dark at the top and I'm just working down so I get a nice blend. And then I could just leave it like that because the Misty Moonlight is actually quite dark. But I'll add a bit of Night of Navy at the top just so you can see what we're doing. So I'll just add a bit of Misty Moonlight. So you see I'm just doing the same, inking up one way. And then I'm going to start a little bit off the paper. So I'm just going to move on. And you can see I'm just darkening that top section a little bit. I don't want to take it too far down. And do you see how quickly I've got that gorgeous night sky look? So I'm going to just stick that to the side just to dry a little bit. I'm not going to change my paper because I don't want to waste paper. Um, so you'll, have, you'll just have to put up with the dirty marks on my paper. So I'm going to switch the um, sponge now. So I'll show you how to do that. All that I will do with this one is I'll go and rinse it out in the sink. Um, you can use just plain water or a little bit of soapy water. It won't, um, it won't always go back to being white. You can see this one is really coloured where I've used it loads. But you can see it doesn't use it, leave any colour on the paper when I rub it, so it's absolutely fine to use. So then I'm just gonna add on another sponge and you just put it on that end and then you just stretch it over and put it on that end. So it's really simple to change. Now I should have said this was just a piece of Whisper White that I cut out with one of our stitched rectangle dies. So that was the third largest of the six stitched rectangle dies. The other two pieces that I've done, 
I've cut down to five by five inches. I may end up cutting those further when we start doing the actual cards. I'll have to see. Like I said, I'm going a bit on the fly today. So I'm just going to wipe this over there just to get off any extra grease. And this time I'm going to do a green. So I've got Just Jade, Shaded Spruce and Pretty Peacock. So let's have a go with those and see how they go together. And these aren't anything that I've planned. Um, it, they're just I've literally just picked them off the shelf because they're nice shades of similar colours. So just have a little play with what you've got. And you can see you get a little texture from the sponges. But I quite like that. I think it adds to it. But if you don't want that, the more that you go over and over it, the less textured it looks. So there's my Just Jade. And I'm going to go with Shaded Spruce next. So I'm going to go from the other end with the Shaded Spruce. And you can see that I'm never going backwards and forwards in exactly the same spot. I'm moving the roller every time that I go backwards and forwards. And that helps to stop any irregularities in it. So if you just go back and forwards like that, you just get a stripe. And you can see I've got some lines in my ink, but I'm happy with that. Because if I want to get rid of them, I can just go over more. But what I actually want to do... Is just adding a bit of pretty peacock so I'm just going to ink it up with a bit of pretty peacock and I'm going to just do that off a bit and I'll go over with that I think I might use a bit more of the pretty peacock at the top so that it gives more of a difference. So I think I'm happy with that now. So that's the second of my pieces. And then I'm going to change my roller again. And this time I'm going to do a red one. So I've got another I've got another five by five piece of this for white here. And this time I've got Poppy Parade, Real Red and Cherry Cobbler inks. So I'm going to start with the Poppy Parade because that's my lightest colour. Ink it up in the same way. So now the Real Red's going on. add a little bit more of the real red I think now I'm going to add some of the cherry cobbler I'm just going to do that at the top here so I'm just going to take the most of the cherry cobbler off my roller here because I've decided that I want to go back in with a bit more Poppy Parade. So I don't want to ruin my Poppy Parade ink pad. Well, I don't have a clean roller at the moment. So I'm just... You, know, you can see it's running pretty much clear now. That's not going to ruin my ink pad. So I'm just going to add in... Because it's a little bit streaky down here. I just want to add in a little bit more Poppy Parade. a 
bit more of that kind of orangey red at the bottom. And you see it's looking much smoother already now. So you can see this gives a different look to some of the other blending tools that you can use for ink blending. But I really like this lure. So I'm going to get rid of this very colourful piece of paper. Then we'll get on and make some cards. So I want to create this blue background into a nice little snow scene. So I'm going to use this Freezing Fun stamp set with all the cute little critters on it and the coordinating dies. They cut out the critters and I'm going to use this one for the snow. So this is how unplanned this is. I've not even decided which stamps to use so I've not actually put them together. So I thought I'd do that on here. So this is a cling stamp set. So it comes with a set of stickers and the actual rubber bits themselves. So I'm going to use the little raccoon. So I'm just going to peel off, this is the backing for the raccoon sticker. And then I'm going to peel the backing off the actual stem. And then just going to line that up on there, excuse me if I get my hair in the way. Put that on there, tear it off and then there's your raccoon mounted on the stem. And then I can just pop that on my block and I'm ready to go. So I've got my Memento Black ink. I'm just going to stamp that on there. In case you've not used this type of stamps before, then I can just peel that off the block. I'm going to use the tree from the same set as well, so I'm just going to stamp that. So the colours I've got here are Shaded Spruce, that's the Dark and the Light Shaded Spruce. Our stamping blends come in dark and light shades of each colour so that you know which ones will blend really nicely together. So I've got the Shaded Spruce, I've got that's Basic Black, Poppy Parade, Cinnamon Cider and Smoky Slate. So I'll do the tree first. in a little bit of petal pink for his nose and inside. And I'm just going to use these dies to take out those shapes. And then I'll be using this one to cut a heel. So I've actually gone around the house a little bit as to how to mat and layer this card because the paper that I've ended up deciding on is kind of a realistic photo effect paper and this is obviously quite a cartoony image but I quite like the texture that the background gives so I'm going to go with it even though technically they don't go together 
So I'm just going to glue that onto the card. So this is just an A6 card blank that I've made out of a thick whisper white cardstock, which is some really nice heavy weight. This is a piece of the feels like frost designer series paper. And I've just cut that quarter of an inch smaller. Just popping that on the front. So then I've got this piece which you know I cut out with the third biggest stitch rectangle die. This is about a quarter of an inch, sorry, this is actually about an eighth of an inch bigger, not a quarter of an inch bigger. And then when I was cutting these off screen, I actually decided to cut out a stitch rectangle the same size as this one and then cut across it using the heel die that I was showing you before. So I'm just going to layer these up. So I want, I want this one to show just behind this one. So I'm going to pop that one in there. Just make sure I need to move it down a bit while I've still got a bit of wiggle room. Right, I'm happy with that placement now. So then I'm going to add my tree on top of that one. So I'll add that just there. And then I'm going to add a few dimensionals on the back of here. Need to get a new pet. So just so you know, when you buy a pack of these dimensionals, you actually get three of these sheets in the pack. So you do get quite a lot. I'm just going to pop that on there. Now you may have seen, I've just smeared some adhesive down there. I've got this adhesive eraser, so if you ever do that, you can just rub it off with the adhesive eraser and it looks really nice again now. And I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on the back of my raccoon. So I decided to just go ahead and emboss this sentiment onto my card. So I'm going to put it up in this corner. So, I'll get my first mark pad. And I'm just going to pop that in the corner. Pour some of my white embossing powder on it. I'm just going to glue this onto the front of my card. So there's that card. So for the red one, I'm going to use this poinsettia petal stamp set. I'm going to use this stamp out of it to just stamp all over the background with some Versamark ink. And then I'm going to heat emboss it in gold to create just a background for my card. I'm going to make it a really simple card. So as I stamp, I'm going to stamp so that some of the flowers go off the side and so that the flower is different ways round so that we get a nice random pattern across it. So I'm just going to bring in an old piece of paper just to pour this onto so that I can put it all back into the pot at the end. And then I'm going to heat this up.
So, a little bit annoyingly, my camera cut out while I was filming this card and I didn't realise. So, I'm just going to talk you through what I've done. I've got a 5 inch square card blank that I've made from Cherry Cobbler cardstock. And on top of that, I've layered a 4 and 3 quarter inch piece of gold foil sheet. And then on top of that, I've I cut down the sprayed heat embossed piece that we made earlier to 4.5 inches and then I've just heat embossed the May Magic and Wonder Bloom this holiday from this Poinsettia Petals stamp set and I just want to show while I've got that stamp set out that it's actually way bigger than it looks on the front because there's two sheets of stamps in the set so for example this stamp here is this stamp so you can see how much bigger that is and all the sentiments are a lot bigger than they look on there no, that's the Merry Christmas versus the Merry Christmas. So I used that to heat emboss that onto some Cherry Cobbler cardstock. And then I cut that out with the second biggest of the circles from the stitch shape dies. And then I made a frame, one of the circle layering dies, in gold. And then I used the poinsettia dies to create these leaves out of gold foil sheet. So they come as a die... And then there's a separate piece that you can choose to use or not that you put in the middle when you're putting it through the machine. And that embosses the veins into the leaves. So that's how I made those leaves and I've just popped that up in the centre. Then now onto our final card. I've cut a five inch card blank from Shaded Spruce cardstock. So then I've got a gold piece that is a quarter of an inch smaller, so four and three quarters inches. And I've cut this down to four and a half inches square. So then I'm going to use this wreath piece and that is from the Forever Gold laser cut sheets. So I just want to show you the Forever Gold laser cut sheets because they're absolutely gorgeous. So some of mine are obviously used but this is a full sheet. You get the one, look this is the piece that we're going to use today. So you get lots of different pieces to use. And then you also, so you get three of those, and then you also get three of these background pieces. So you can see they're absolutely gorgeous. So you can use those as card fronts. They're really gorgeous. So I just wanted to show you those because they're really worth getting if you don't have them. So then I'm just going to use this Celebrating Style stamp in the centre because I think it's quite a stylish card and I think it goes well with the card. So I'm just going to heat emboss that in gold. So just get my embossing buddy on that. So now just glue the layers onto the card. Then I'm just going to glue my wreath on. I'm just going to put the glue on the full leaves so that it doesn't come through. And also it helps give it a bit of dimension if you don't put the glue all over the place because some of the leaves will then naturally kind of stick up a little bit and a bit more dimension. So then finally to finish off this card, I've taken some cherry cobbler cardstock and popped some of the adhesive sheets on the back and then I have used this die with the holes in that's from the North Pole Wonder die set. I've just cut out a load of those holes so I just used two passes through the machine and so I've got these that I'm going to use as little berries. You could always use self adhesive gems but I don't actually have any cherry cobbler ones and I particularly wanted to use cherry cobbler for this project so I'm just going to decorate the wreath with some of these this is quite fiddly so if you've not got any nails then you might want to use like the take my pick tool take your pick tool the take your pick tool or something like that to help you get the backs off. So 
So that's all of the berries on my card now. I did actually design this as a Christmas card, but I think with the celebrating style, it'd actually be nice for a winter birthday as well. So I'm going to bring in the other cards that we've made today. So here's the one with the poinsettias, and there's the fun, fun one with the freezing fun. So we've got three different cards that we've made using the brayering background, and I think they're all really cute. So there's the freezing fun. This is the one that we made with the forever gold. That sentiment's from the gift wrapped stamp set, by the way. And then this one with the poinsettia. So I hope you enjoyed our projects today. I hope that it's inspired you to do some sponge braying yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please click like below. And if you'd like to see future projects, click subscribe and turn your notifications on so that you'll be notified when I put a new video on my channel. All of the products that we've used today will be linked in the description below. And there'll also be a host code there, so if you pop that in your basket before you check out, then I'll send you a free gift at the end of the month. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.